Okay, now the uh, last cable here that I'm going to cover is the aluminum interlocking armor. The question that I've actually seen where is um, a question about plastic jacket cable being tough enough for most applications where there's a need for conduit. So, you know, maybe conduit's going away and we're, we're able to start using more basket tray these days instead of conduit due to this armor. And that is actually pretty accurate. Most of the, there are certifying bodies like UL that certify what they call exposed run or, um, or direct burial cables. Um, an example of this cable anyway, this is a direct burial cable and kind of the difference just as an overview for you, the, the exposed run versus the direct burial is, is just something with their actual test requirements um, and that has to do with the uh, amount of weight that they can endure over a certain amount of time. I believe if I remember correctly exposed run cables um, need to be able to handle a thousand pounds um, under, you know, like a, I guess they, a thousand pound load immediately uh, removing the weight and there can't be any compromise of the, the outer jacket, um, you know, via cracks or rupper, ruptures in the jacket insulation and they certainly can't have uh, one of the conductor short circuit or sever. Um, now direct burial is, I believe, basically about these, the same thing except it needs to be able to handle that thousand pound load for one minute or one hour or something like that but that would be um, the UL uh, directive anyway so you'd have to check with UL to, to, to know for sure so anyway just covering those couple topics so let's go ahead and get started on this uh, this orange cable and again I'm gonna use this um, copper, copper pipe cutters where it's really just pipe cutters in general now something I discovered myself doing this was that if you actually set the depth of this thing right from the beginning um, and this would take a little bit of practice you'd have to kind of know what you're what you're doing and be um, well versed but uh, one of the a good installer can probably set the depth just right to where you not only cut the outside jacket but you cut through the conduit at the same time without damaging the internal wire so uh, that's what I'm going to aim for real quick here, and let's see if I if I do it perfect. Uh, you know, if I do it and cut the wire, then hey, it's just a <laughs> example video for you guys anyway. But um, let's see if I got it. Uh, and I think I did. Yeah, there we go. So as you see, I'll start slipping this off. Oh well, I say I did, and then I. I kind of did. I guess the, the piece there did break free. So um, there you go. Very simple, right? It's, it's through the conduit and the plastic jacketing on the outside, leaving uh, now just this inner cable. And, it, and if you inspect it down here, I didn't nick any of the wire, so that's great. It's exactly what we're looking for. So the next step, of course, would then be to take a pair of um, cutters and the only ones, unfortunately, I have was, were these ones from the first video uh, to cut wire. So we're going to hope, anyway, here that this uh, pair can handle this larger size wire. And I, I maybe should have set this stuff up before the first time, but um, let's see what it does. Oh, okay. Yeah. It handled it just fine. So slide off the outer jacket. Simple enough, huh? <laughs> so anyway, got that off. Again, like I said earlier, I mean, it, it takes a little bit more time than your standard cable, so you just got to be prepared for that. So, um, and of course, let's get this drain wire out of the way. And it is foil wrapped. Very easily peel that off. And then, of course, we got our shield wire here and our H1 cables here the negative and the positive. Um, now the nifty part that I get to get into now with you guys is these really cool strippers uh, that I mentioned Cobalt sent over. 
um, as you as you can probably tell here these things have an adjustable stop that you can slide back and forth and I'll show you why here in a minute but that actually adjusts the depth of the um, strip that you're going to be putting on your wire and then of course up here you would slide this forward and backwards to adjust for the gauge of wire that you uh, plan on stripping but I'll do this real slow here so you can see it but as the, the uh, jaws clamp down on the cable as you begin to squeeze the strippers engage and pull the jacket and or cut the jacket and pull it back all at once and once you reach back clicks and unlocks right so let me give you an example here real quick of how this works so you slide in your cable and it bumps that stop right there right um, now you squeeze down it grabs a wire and with one quick movement watch this boom there's the whole jacket and let's see if I can get the camera to focus here on it I don't know if it will or not um, but anyway that that very quickly strips and removes that jacket for you right and the adjustable depth thing is really nice because when it comes time to ferrule these things that depth is set perfectly um, by you of course to fit that ferrule right over top of it um, to get the right length of um, conduit exposed underneath to go into this shaft here and to also leave nothing exposed here at the uh, jacket on your particular um, wire so I mean it, it's, it's a really amazing tool it works real quick it's real easy and if, if I was out there installing this would absolutely be a tool in my tool belt so now to um, you know that was a good example of that tool so the one last element that I actually wanted to talk to everybody about was this silicon tape I'm not sure if anybody's seen this stuff or not um, but it's basically an alternative to your heat shrink or electrical tape and I gotta say I'm, I was surprised by it um, you know I have my my doubts for it but I also am, have been very much surprised with it and, and what it can do so let me clip off a little piece here and then I'll review it with everybody and, and talk about this stuff in its use case so uh, for this wire here um, I'll just wrap it around the base of it just to kind of give an example similar to the, the heat shrinking I had done previously but as you might be able to tell it's not sticky like tape I mean it's you can you can touch on this stuff and it doesn't cling to your fingers um, you can even get it wet and even dirty and even soiled and it will still clean that was one of the things I actually made sure and test with this stuff because having my doubts about how well this stuff will work I thought well all right if you're out in the field you're installing you know it's it's going to be dirty it's going to be sandy it possibly could even be a little bit rainy or wet that day how's this stuff going to clean um, and honestly I think I, I was very surprised the the pros of it is that you don't need to be dragging around you know a, a heat gun to shrink things with or or use an open flame or anything like that um, so there's no electrical cords no gas no uh, butane involved anything which is actually really nice um, and like I said I, I got it wet and it would still clean I even rubbed it all over a dirty surface that I can find and it still clung um, you know the, the cons to it is is that it doesn't quite clean up the wires and look as nice as heat shrink it won't hold them together as nice um, whenever you heat shrink something it really shrinks down over those wires and you know if you try and separate the wires or pull them apart it really resists you it, I mean you really got to tug them to get that thing to basically rip you know it's going to hold or rip is, is all but this will tend to open back up um, and separate especially whenever you wrap it over smaller wires the thing that I found this stuff best for was was around here the base of these real big wires and I'll show you exactly why because uh, that plastic will cling to you anyway uh, as you begin to wrap here um, you just pick a part of the base right and give it a little tension on it as you wrap this thing around so it stays nice and snug and 
I like to try and bunch this around the, the wires here at the base as I wrap. Again, keeping tension to make sure everything stays snugged up. And there you go. I mean, look at that. It, like I said, it, it's not that it looks quite as nice as the um, heat shrunk version, but it clings really well to this big stuff. Uh, you know, once it's sitting there and set, I actually tried to pull this off earlier um, running through it. And I mean, it's you got to get in there with a fingernail, and then even once you get the lip of it, you really got to pull and rip on it and stretch it to get it to cling back apart. So, you know, I, I got to admit that I was very impressed. I, I, I still have my reservations. I, I'm not sure, you know, how this thing does in the long term in an actual application over 10 years. Is it going to maintain its um, sticky clinging properties of itself? Maybe so. I don't know. Um, but certainly it's something that very much surprised me and, and actually has, has turned out to be a very nice um, alternative to heat shrink. View once more with you guys here. I appreciate you spending the time watching the video. Um, and I just wanted to reiterate kind of what exactly we, we looked at here in this video. And that was these, um, these uh, quick strippers that, you know, I can't say enough about these things. These things are, are absolutely fat and I would certainly recommend them to anybody looking to, uh, to, to do any sort of uh, wire installations with any sort of frequency. It's a really, really great tool. Um, and, you know, I can't say enough about these either. Um, Cobalt really had uh, a good thought here using these pipe cutters on the armored cable. It's certainly the best way to get through it, trying to use wire clippers or any sort of, you know, sharp blade to do it really just isn't going to get it done. Um, certainly one of the best ways to do it uh, is, is right here. And then the big surprise was, was certainly this um, silicon tape that Cobalt sent over. I mean, it was really, really interesting stuff. Uh, like I said, you know, long-term application, is it good? Will it last? Uh, you know, I don't know. I can't, I can't say maybe somebody out there has um, some, some better uh, use cases or something where they've used it and have seen how it lasts throughout the years and can, can uh, elaborate further. But certainly sitting here in the office um, messing with this stuff, it turned out to be surprisingly good even in wet and dirty conditions. So that was cool. And then of course these uh, the wires that Northwire sent over. Again, big thanks to both these companies. Um, Northwire was really nice to get this stuff all together and send it over quick so I could do this. So. Um, Anyway, great, great wires that they got, aluminum interlocking armor, braided armor, and then of course um, plastic jacketed example, which is, is these are all plastic jacketed, but um, this empty set here was um, real nice for them to send. So hopefully this was beneficial to all you guys, and thanks for watching.